Art and Anna. We're gonna ferment some kale from our garden. What's the very first thing we do? Pick the kale. <laughs> okay. All right, smarty pants. <laughs> and then what? We're gonna we wash this it morning. next. And so we, this has already been just torn off and washed. And I'm gonna chop this kale. Okay. Now, it doesn't really matter how finely you chop it. And um, I, I recommend chopping it um, kind of just moderately finely. You don't have to worry yeah. about this step very much. Okay. And we're gonna do this together. Don't they look alike? What's going on here? Brie was saying we look like twins the other day. She your saw si it your sister and brother, for those that don't know. We're and this is Art from the Art and Brie channel. Hey guys. Um, so, we're gonna do this like in a community way because that's my favorite way to make fermented foods. And it's, I love making them with the kids and I love making them to other people and I love teaching, teaching people. And so like, we have random fermenting parties at our house as often as possible. Nice. Many of them never filmed. So you're gonna keep chopping. She's just gonna be sprinkling salt. I'm gonna sprinkle a little salt and, and then massage it. Massage it. Get up and close with that kale. Now listen, for those that don't know, we'll f let's start with this. Why in the world would you ferment in the first place or even what is fermenting? Mm. So maybe what, what is it and, and why? So fermenting is a highly controlled decomposition of food that actually results in its preservation. You set the conditions for these particular anaerobic bacteria to proliferate and they actually make a lot of lactic acid which actually preserves the food. Yeah, and so it's preservation, but what about health? <clears throat> Can one of you speak to the health benefits of ferment? Yeah, let's talk about specifically with kale and other cruciferous vegetables. There's some compounds in them. I don't remember the exact name of them, but there's these, these plant compounds in kale, cabbage, bok choy, that when you ferment them, they get transformed and made even more bioavailable, and they're really powerful anti-carcinogens. So that's just one example of how fermentation transforms food and makes it even more nutritional for you. And then there's the benefit of eating the live bacteria and how they can affect your guts, your gut health. Do you think we can get this much kale into this jar. I know that I'm supposed to say no. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> but well, I know you you're going to shock us all. You may be surprised. With this your magic gonna, trick. This is going to blow your mind. This needs to be your lead in for this video because it's oh, so good. Okay. <laughs> Fitting that much kale into this. Life. How are we going to do that, Mr. David Blaine? <laughs> <laughs> We're just going to stuff it in there. So, what we've done so far is just chopped the cabbage. And Anna is salting the cabbage. How much salt approximately have you put in there? Maybe a teaspoon and a half. Now, if you're new to fermenting, this is gonna sound crazy to you, but you can make most fermented vegetables and just taste the food. And if it tastes salty enough, it'll be enough salt. Hmm. I know that sounds crazy. I'm just acknowledging that. Why is that. that crazy? It's crazy because most people think you have to get it perfect. Okay to be successful with fermenting. But this is actually a technique that probably, arguably the most like reputable fermenting teacher in the country, his name is Sandor Katz. And he highly recommends fermenting by taste. So let's taste this. Yeah, here we go. Ooh. Sorry. Nice and salty. I think it's good. There's a pretty big range that you can use. I'm actually mm -hmm. gonna put a little more salt in it. Are you doing it salt by taste? We're doing salt by taste. This is the simplest way to ferment. And by your own personal taste. Some people like more salt than others. Mm -hmm. I've taught this on my YouTube channel and, and brought along people, a lot of people along in the past, but this works with most vegetables, putting salt on it. Should it be uncomfortably salty or should it be, it should this taste is how it's salted if I was about to eat it? Yeah, it should taste salty and you like the taste. Okay, all right. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. <clears throat> So all we've done is add salt to this. We're going to add some peppers for a little punch. And these are a Korean hot pepper. You could use any hot pepper. Um, and That's we're gonna about use a about a teaspoon. It may freak some of y'all out that, that we didn't measure the kale, we didn't measure the salt, and we didn't measure the peppers. But I'm telling you that this is a legitimate way to go out and make fermented foods. This is how I actually usually make ferments. Mm -hmm. 
that is that your works. style in life art or is yeah. that a fermenting you got me instruction <laughs> both this I guess is I've known art a while this is one approach you can take to fermenting and it's a very okay. legitimate one on the other hand we could have actually weighed this mm -hmm. um, yeah. we could have used a brine and weighed it but yeah what's your style Anna? Uh, for, are you a measurer or I'm are you more just of a, a throw it in? Yep. And so we, is this driving you a little nuts? No. It actually, it, it doesn't bother me. With this okay. style, so this is kind of a dry salted and there's also another big category called brine. So that's where you like, mix up like a salt water. With the brine, I really like to measure it. I like to use a scale and get really precise. Um, but for this kind of ferment where you're not adding a bunch of liquid, this works well because you can get a good feel for the taste. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and pack this jar next. And that's just really straightforward. We're just gonna cram it down in here. I'm actually not he's, sure if it's gonna fit. <laughs> oh, we're calling him on his magic trick here. I was like. Oh, look, he's breaking out the wooden spoon. <laughs> Your wooden spoon, yep. So you are gonna jam it in there. Oh yeah. There's two ways to do this. The technique we're using here, Anna mentioned, is called dry salting. And this is the basic technique for making um, sauerkraut or any other vegetable um, that will create its own brine, essentially. Your unmeasured style is totally acceptable in this case. Definitely. You've created this course. Yeah. Wh why? Why a course on this and not a course on bow hunting? Um, because I think this is really valuable and it's something I'm pa very passionate about. Mm. And between us, we share okay. a lot of experience and knowledge. So yeah. it's something I love sharing. Yeah. I don't know why. It's like it's magic. That's the thing. What it happens is. in here is like magic. You're a, you're a magician, actually. You you like magic tricks, I can tell. Yeah, I do. <laughs> it's all coming up. What about you, Anna? I, d I think they taste really good. That's at this point. That's one of the okay. big draws. I got into it for health reasons. Started fermenting to improve my gut health, and I got hooked on the flavor. It just you just get flavors that you don't really get in any other way. What liquid is coming out there? That's actually the brine that the salt's creating. It's wow. pulling the liquid wow. out of the plant and it's making a brine, which is going to cover it. Now, the easy way to do this. I think you can do it, Art. Keep yeah, I can magic, get it. Man. The easy way is actually to let this sit for 30 minutes. Oh. And it'll soften a lot. But you can just expedite it by just packing your jar or pounding that and massaging that uh, vegetable in a bowl heavily. It's definitely all going in. Yeah, right? Wow. And you don't add any water or anything? No. There's multiple techniques to fermenting. You can you can use a brine technique where you add salt water and you can pour that over nearly any vegetable. But with a technique like this, the veg and the salt create the brine. And all you need is the salt for for the for the vegetable to start breaking down. Mm -hmm. That's right. Okay, how much time? <clears throat> Um, when this ready? So you could eat this from like five to six days out to months out. It's going to get stronger and stronger. Okay. It's going to get more and more acidic, especially over the first weeks. So now we're going to take a weight. And what is that weight for those that don't know? This is like a fermenting, a fermenting specific glass weight. It's called a pickle pebble. I think that's the brand yeah. perhaps. Um, we're going to put it on top of here. And the reason for this is to hold down the kale and make it so that the liquid covers it fully. Yeah, because you don't want any oxygen getting in there. Exactly. You want this to go anaerobic. Exactly, yep. Okay. And take a look here. We got the vegetable line and the liquid line. That's great, plenty of coverage. Okay. And it's, it's gonna get even better as time goes on. The salt will do its work and pull more of the liquid out and there'll be plenty of brine okay. up here. That's it. One more step. Last step is to cover this um, and label, oh, I wanna show this. This is actually my favorite fermenting weight. Just okay. a little jar. So you don't have to buy specific weights. In fact, I've almost never used a product that's sold specifically for fermenting. I just mm -hmm. use jars. I'm gonna cover this with a piece of paper. And I'm going to put... That's parchment paper. Yeah, mm -hmm. just a parchment paper. Does it have to be paper? Could it have been a cloth? You can use almost anything. Okay. Um, I, like, I like the parchment paper a lot. I like fabric a lot. And I'm going to put a ring on it. And I'm going to just put it on just enough to hold it. Um, I don't want it tight because 
as the bacteria really proliferate and grow in here, they're going to create quite a bit of CO2 and it's going to need to escape. And I used the rubber band in the carrot yeah. video. Rubber band is a great way. Yeah. If you put a tight sealed lid on it, there is a small risk it'll explode. It's not likely, but it can, it can explode. Yeah. Um, and so, all we're trying to do is just keep stuff out of here. So speaking of explosions, you <laughs> told me before we started filming that you wanted to talk about safety. So yeah, we're not talking about explosions. What are we talking about? We're talking about people being afraid that they're going to make their family sick okay. or hurt their family by making fermented foods. And we heard this so much from people and it was mm -hmm. actually something that we identify with. And I, I actually wouldn't, the first time I fermented food, I didn't let my kids eat it. Like I tested it on myself. So you were nervous yourself? I was yeah. nervous. So it's people a little, think it's five gonna years go moldy? Ago. It's a little freaky because we use re refrigerators generally a lot. Yeah. Okay, to, this is not going in the fridge. This is gonna set out, you know, here with on the counter with the carrots. Okay, yeah. Um, it's gonna set at room temperature and it's prepared vegetables. Okay. And if it wasn't submerged under the water, it would rot, it would go bad, it would end up a slimy mess, you'd okay. have flies. And that's kind of, we've been programmed to think, you know, preservation cold <laughs> cold storage but um so it's just different and we found that when we show people what to look for for when a ferment's going well and what to look for okay. for issues that might come up and how to address them we've done this we've put it over here I imagine people are afraid that this is going to go bad perhaps it's going to make them sick yeah. that's what maybe you were afraid of when you didn't feed your child so what's what's the what, what's the big takeaway that we can uh, know that we're not going to do that. It, essentially, if you closely babysit your ferments, mm -hmm. you can catch any issues as they come up. And and the thing is with fermented foods, you're going to see it or you're going to smell it if it's going okay. bad. What okay. people are, a lot of people have this botulism fear from the old, all the canning warnings. Yeah. And it's almost impossible to grow botulism in fermented foods. Okay. That's okay. like scientifically proven, like by the USDA, by many studies, because it acidifies. Okay. Um, and botulism doesn't, people don't get botulism from fermented foods, period. Vegetables, let me say that. There, there are cases with some meat products. Yeah, so for the most part, you can maybe trust your eyes and nose? You can trust your eyes and nose with mm -hmm. your ferments, yeah. Okay. Yeah, we could talk a little bit about ba the babysitting process, though, okay. for people who are maybe doing this as yeah. a first ferment. So, um, if you put this together, on, you want to check it the very next day. And the main thing you're checking for at that point is you can maybe lift up your lid and look and just check again to see if the brine is covering the vegetable. Um, in this case, it's not. It probably will be tomorrow, but we'll just pretend. You can come in. How do you know it's not? Um, oh, oh, the, the liquid is not on top. There's there's air touching the vegetable oh, over here. Okay. So you can see it yeah. through the glass. So because of that, I'll open it up, press this down, and now it's covering it. So there we go, okay. problem solved lid back on, continue to happily ferment. Um, you want to check it uh, definitely on day one, then you can start skipping days like day three, day five, yeah. and uh, space mount even more from there. Okay. The big thing is making sure that your vegetable, no matter what it is, stays under the brine. Because if it gets out, you will have issues. You will have mold on it. Um, but if everything stays under the brine, it'll be fine. This, by the way, is actually an experiment because I was just so interested in fermenting in the past month that I ran out into the garden and said, what can I ferment? And I just grabbed a bunch of kale and fermented it. Nice. So we just kind of made that up. It turned out and nicely. We, I think so. We've had students mm -hmm. who've gone through our course already mm -hmm. do the same thing. That's they're exactly they're right. like, wow, I did like these, they did some of the recipes from the course. They watched some, a bunch of the videos and they're now posting and messaging us i just did something i've never done before yeah. and this thank you you know that's perfect i want hang on to that thought i want you to speak a little bit more about what students are saying but you guys have created a course for this and from talking with you i feel i feel like the the number one pain point for folks is they have an idea that they want to ferment for whatever reason for preservation for health mm -hmm. they're maybe a little nervous they won't get it right they're a little nervous of maybe getting sick or something. Uh, can you speak to that? Do you think that's true for yeah. folks' this pain point? Uh, people are also worried about the, the cost of like getting equipment oh, and the complexity okay. of it. But the fact is like it's actually very affordable. And even just like this setup right here, 
And if you think about using this jar as a weight, you're not using any specialized yeah, equipment. You probably already have it. Yeah. So if you have this right here and you have kale in your garden, you should go make some. Okay. Now. So now they've, they've done all this hard work to figure this out, uh, line it out for you guys. They've created a course. You spoke to students already talking about it. This has already been put out yeah. in a beta. So this has already been proven. It's there and it's there until what, Sunday? Sunday at midnight. Sunday at midnight you close. Mm -hmm. uh, so what are some other things students are saying? So, I mean, we're, we're a little biased. We're a little biased because we're selling this course. <laughs> but what, what are the students already saying besides what are you, you already said, mm -hmm. which was beautiful? So one of the things that um, a student told us was that the, just how systematic the course is and then walking her through information and this uh, very detailed instructions on how to make each recipe and then explaining the science of fermenting really actually fe freed her from that fear. And so she said she'd made fermented foods in the past and never eaten them. And then she took our course and now she's actually eating her own ferments for nice. the first time because Good. she's confident. Yeah. That's encouraging. We had another student say that the course was so enjoyable and engaging that her teenage son actually jumped in and did all the fermenting projects with her. What? <laughs> she was like, so what? So it's a family. Yeah. Well, this is your first course to put out, isn't it? Yeah. And yours too, Anna? Mm -hmm. So yeah. how does that feel? How does that feel to put a course out in the world and you're already changing people's lives? Like a mom and a son are getting together and working together to create something healthy. It was a little scary ahead of time and then that just completely transitioned into very fun and fulfilling because it actually worked like we had these goals in mind and our goal was to yeah. get people through their fear through hurdles and fermenting like immediately and and we've been successful so, so what were you awesome. scared about uh just like so the, it was a huge time investment and, and okay a lot of it was her like she went full time on it and that was yeah. it was a risk i wasn't yeah, really I mean, afraid maybe it wouldn't have worked out yeah we took a risk mm -hmm. i mean i think anna yeah. put um, about two months full time okay into it. And yeah. so it and was kind of like, and the last few weeks. <laughs> I hope this is going to work. Plus it's like we, we are fairly experienced and we've framed out this course with the goals in mind, but are the steps and the way we, when we took 50 sticky notes and laid them out for every piece of information, every video and laid them out, is that going to work for a new fermenter? Yeah. So that mm -hmm. was part of the fear. So how did you overcome the fear guys? Um, Jumping in. <laughs> just doing it. Jumping just in so together fear. too. Just, just embracing the fear. Yeah. You had each other. It is it is better if you're gonna be scared to be with a be with a friend. And so I, I see a lot of parallels here. So they they were scared to to do this course, but they just jumped in. And yeah. some of you guys may be scared to do ferments, but maybe you just need to jump in. Maybe you're maybe you're scared to get their course. <laughs> but you just need to jump in. Cause and then see what it's about. And I think when you get to the other side of what you were so afraid of, it, it doesn't become so scary. Yeah, that's true. I know that from the Great American Farm Tour. Mm. Yeah. And maybe if you do get into the course, you call a friend to have them come over. That's right. And watch the videos together and do some of the projects together. Exactly. And then fear is more, fear turns into fun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> this is not in your course, but I get to offer it as a bonus as, as an affiliate of theirs. If you buy through my link down in the description, you'll get how we built these carrots, made these carrots. We just did it, we filmed a little video. You'll get that free. I guess you'll send me people's emails after the close on That's Sunday. That's right, I'm gonna send you people's emails so, so they can get that bonus. Yeah, first. so g you guys gotta get in before Sunday and then Art will get me those who, who bought through my course and I'll send you the special video uh, of those carrots. We have a carrot stick video oh, in okay. the course already, but Anna said, hey, the roads for many carrots are so good that yeah. we should make a video on that. And, and these are more like carrot chips. And exactly. you guys eat, have eaten them like this for years Yeah, we can now. attest to so. them. Yeah, they're good. We, we actually have offer a complete guarantee. So if people like actually do enroll in the course and then they say, oh, this isn't what I wanted or I didn't learn what I want, like they, they can completely get their money yeah. back. So yeah. So really there's don't no be reason to be, yeah. let's take that off the table. They should not be afraid to buy the course because if they don't like it, they can get their money back. Yeah, and we- Easily. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, has anybody done that? Um, I think we have like a one or two percent refund rate, and, oh we, my gosh. and we're refunding people yes. like immediately. You're so having <laughs> it'll be easy. We won't we won't bug you. You have a ninety nine percent chance you're gonna love the course, and if you're that one percent, I had a guy call because I do the same thing, mm -hmm. and I had a guy, he canceled. I even put this in an email marketing. He canceled on me. Canceled. Yeah. I gave him all his money back. Why? Well, he forgot to talk to his wife. 
Oh, no. <laughs> he's just like, I guess it wasn't in the budget, so. Well, I'm not even we, asking we people it. why. So it wasn't even, even a problem with the course. Yeah. It's just the social dynamics at home. Oops. Yeah. <laughs> so talk to your spouse or whoever. Please. Yeah. And, and, and get on this course. <laughs>